Hello everyone, welcome back. It's really, really cold today. Winter is definitely wintering. <sighs> so, nothing is working at the yard. All the taps are frozen, all the hoses are frozen. Like, I'm having to go and get buckets out of the big water container that I have. It's just not ideal. And normally I'd like to ride early in the morning or like last thing, but it's just gone lunchtime. I've had to just kind of abort work for a couple of hours and just get McAllister ridden now because it's the only chance of the day where things are kind of thawing out, but if we give it another couple of hours, the temperature's gonna start dropping rapidly again and everything's going to go rock hard. So, I mean, it's now one o'clock and you can see we've still got, I mean, I think it's definitely frozen. Like, we're definitely a bit frosty. I've got so many layers on. I'm actually quite nice and toasty at the moment, but, I think you've just got to keep moving. So anyway, what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do was get both horses exercised, both of the boys anyway. Purdy's still not doing anything until the spring. And I thought it'd be quite nice to take the boys out and do a ride and lead. But of course the roads have been frozen, so I think they're okay to ride on now. The fields are rock hard, so I can't ride on the fields. And I thought if I do ride and lead, that means I've got to ride Billy because he's so naughty to lead. He's awful. I'd have to ride Billy and lead McAllister, but as he's going hunting this weekend, I kind of just wanted to ride him and make sure that he was getting a good workout. But it's just, it's not a question of whether I can lead Billy or not. It's just, it's a no. We all know it's a no. He's not leadable. He's a terror. So I think Billy's gonna have a day off and we'll just get McAllister ridden. Maybe only do like half an hour. I might take Otis with me. Baby Dill can stay in the tack room on his bean bag underneath all of the rugs. I thought I'd take you along for the ride, literally, because it's such a pretty day. Like, I do love winter's days like this, when it's just, the sun is out, it's bloody freezing, but the sun is out, the sky is bright blue, and just everything is so crisp and fresh. And just cozy, like, I'm feeling a little bit festive now, and normally I'm a complete Scrooge, like, bar humbug, I hate Christmas. I don't hate it, but I kind of do. His rug's over his head and I'm not sure why. Um. Oh, you good boy. Winter's only really kicking off now. Like the last few weeks, it's been very, very mild. <laughs> anyway what was i saying um so for the last few weeks winter's been very very mild like it's been up to like 13 degrees in the daytime which is ridiculous for november december anyway went down to like minus six last night so last night when i came out and i was putting the water to bed i was like we all need extra rugs on so purdy's got her heavyweight winter coat on with a stable rug underneath Billy's got the same, but McAllister, even though he's clipped, he's still got the same rugs that he's had on the whole time anyway, and he still feels lovely and warm, so go figure. He is as fat as a pie at the moment. Speaking of fat pies, I took Purdy's rug off the other day because it was nice and sunny. I thought, let's get the sun on her back. She's had that rug on non-stop for a couple of weeks. So I took it off and I thought, oh my goodness, are we expecting twins? She's got this massive fat tummy. So um, that was a nice surprise, <laughs> but it means that she'll winter well. And I'm thinking back to when I had McAllister and Mr. Jones, and I did the same thing with them. I just turned them out in the field for a month. I'm actually lying to you. I didn't do that with Mr. Jones. With Mr. Jones, I kind of just got straight on and kept going with him. But with McAllister, he had a month in the field when I first got him. 
And I was literally doing exactly the same thing as I'm doing with Purdy, like just a little bit of hay and a tiny bit of hard feed. And he came in after a month or two and was just all ribs and he'd lost so much condition. Purdy, I think she's gonna be quite a good doer because she's hardly getting any hard feed at all. She's getting half a scoop in the morning um, and half a scoop for dinner. And she looks really well, almost too well on it. Whereas this one needs like six scoops a day and he's just about ticking over. So, you know, they're all different, all got different metabolisms. So yes, that was a little tangent. I'm feeling very chatty today, so enjoy. Get out of the alley. watched the vlog for my birthday when we all went for a nice little pub ride you may have seen a girl on there called Leah and she's been coming out riding the horses for me because she is without a horse at the moment so she's just kind of riding everybody's around here which is very very handy having someone come and ride your horses and she's a very capable rider she's very gentle and just she's just a kind rider so I really like her on my horses um, Anyway, we were chatting the other day after we'd been for a ride. I think she rode Billy and I rode McAllister. Although we kind of alternate because neither of us can ever choose which one to ride. She'll always come in as she's the guest. I'm like, which horse would you like to ride? She's like, I don't mind. Which one do you want to ride? I'm like, I don't mind. So we kind of just alternate. And one time she'll ride Billy, then the next time she'll ride Callie. And then we just go back and forth like that. Um, but anyway, we were laughing. Because do you remember when you first start riding and you've got all of these different brushes, like you get the little kits that have, I don't know, eight, nine brushes, like a face brush, a main brush, a tail brush, body brush, curry comb, rubber curry comb. I can't remember what the others are, but you know, you know the sets that I mean. And you're really like nitpicky about which brushes you use on which one. I use a tangle teaser for almost everything now. It's like one brush and a hoof pick and I can pretty much get a horse looking all right. Like, yes, they may not be show ready, but I'm not going to a show. So um, fully rate the Tangle Teaser. Once you've owned horses for a while, it's just like, eh, that'll do. You know, priorities change and it's like, you never stop learning and you never stop tweaking how you do things. And I don't know, like last night before I went to bed, I was thinking about deep littering. I'm very, I've got a very exciting life. And I was like, I wonder if I should deep litter McAllister because he's quite clean in how he poos in his stable, but he's very, very wet. Like he drinks a lot, he wheezes a lot. He's just that kind of horse. Um, and I found that unless he ha ugh. and I found that unless his bed is super, super deep, I just waste so much bedding. So the deeper his bed, the better. The way that I've always mucked out is literally like forking all of the bedding up into a pile up the banks and then taking out any wet or any soiled bedding. But as there's so much bedding in his stable, not only does it take so long, it literally will take me 20 minutes to muck out his stable. It's also backbreaking because it's so heavy to move all of this bedding around. So I thought, do I deep litter him and just remove the droppings? So I think I'm gonna try that. I don't, well, I say that. I think I'm gonna commit to like doing a week and then maybe like removing all the wet after a week rather than actual full deep littering, which is when you leave it for months and months. I don't think I'm quite capable of leaving it that long, but we'll see. And it's funny because that's something I never would have considered. I've been like, oh my God, deep littering horses is so bad for them. But actually I don't think it is and I think, Courses for courses, everyone's different and you um, muck different horses out differently. So if any of you deep litter or if you semi deep litter, which is I think what I'm suggesting, let me know and if you've got any tips on how to do it or what you found works for you, let me know because I'm very open and very interested to learn more about deep littering and I'm going to try it. So this morning all I did was take out the poo and there was some wet that had come to the top so I took out that little area but I didn't like turn all of the bedding over and like get out everything that was damp so 
I'm going to put another couple of bags in later. So he's got a really nice dry bed on top. That's pretty much it. And the best part is, it took me five minutes to muck his stable out. And it was like half a wheelbarrow of stuff. So, you know, I think deep littering is my future. I think I'm going to do it. You okay in there, Bobas? You okay? <laughs> Should've done that first, really, shouldn't I? Cal? How not to put a bridle on a horse. You're so good. rosy because I am frozen my face feels like it's gonna crack it's so cold just had a mini crisis moment so I was coming down the bridal way and McAllister was like oh my god and of course there's a hissing noise which he thought was a snake but it's not a snake shockingly it's my neighbor's water trough the pipe has frozen and burst and it's just um hissing out water so We've just called my neighbour to let her know that her trough needs turning off. I would just go and turn it off myself. Like, I'm not, I'm not that rude and that lazy. But the gate's padlocked shut and I can't get off and leave McAllister whilst I jump over the gate and go and turn it off. So that's why I've not done it myself. I would. Like, I, I am a good neighbour, I think. So hopefully they'll get here soon. If they leave it much longer, it'll be a total ice rink. Sometimes, sometimes, this is the tea on this horse, sometimes he is perfect at gates, other times he just messes around and I think because I'm trying to film, hello, because I'm trying to film and hold the phone and, oh no, there we go, job done, I thought he was going to be a bit more difficult than that but He's a good boy. He understood the assignment. Gate opener extraordinaire. Also, do you like my plants? I absolutely did not do these yesterday and sleep in them. That's why they look so tidy. I think braids or plaits look really good on other people. I've just always hated them. I've only got them in now for like functionality. My nose is so cold, like I'm going to be talking so nasally because my sinus thing gets worse when it's cold. So, um, you know, enjoy my squeaky little voice where I can't pronounce my words properly. I just can't get them out. But anyway, we don't care. I love plaits on other people, other girls, other women. I think they look lovely. On me, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether my hair, because my hair is so thick and there's so much of it, it just never looks right. It never fits my head but they're just so convenient and so practical. So 
functionality over style. And whilst we're talking about my sinuses, I've got another appointment with the doctor on Wednesday next week. And I think they're going to refer me for surgery because everything they've tried so far has not shifted my problem. So we may be going for sinus surgery. Come on, you. There's a very specific pain that I think only my equestrians will get. You know when you're going through a gate on your horse and they slightly go a little bit close to the gate post and you don't get there in time to kind of correct the angle that you're going through and you just get your shin absolutely pounded against a gate post. That's just happened. It hurts. Like it just... I don't know how to describe the pain. It's just, you kind of have to just try and switch off and forget about it, but it's still there. You can't quite move past it. It's just like having something smashed into your shin. It's a very specific pain. And unless you felt it, you won't know what it's like. But if you have me just telling you about it now, you'll be like, yes, and you'll feel it and you'll wince and you'll know. It just hurts so much. And actually, me talking to you about it now is kind of doing what I need it to do. It's lessening the pain, although my whole leg feels numb. On a cold day as well, you just know the pain is so much worse. The hands are talking, like that means I'm feeling it deep in my soul. <laughs> I think we'll be safe to have a little canter in here. It's definitely still a little bit frozen, but it's not rock hard. Like when I'm trotting on it, you can't hear the do, 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 which uh, normally is a little signal that the ground might be a little bit too firm. But um, this sounds all right. So I think we'll have a short, short canter. And um, probably call it a day because I'm not far from home now. And um, I just felt like it was too soon to finish the ride. I've gone through all this effort of putting his tack on and bringing Otis with. It just seemed a shame to only ride him for like 20 minutes. So we'll have a little canter and um, then go and put the fire on. Come on. how long my reins are. <laughs> Why do I ever think I'm gonna have any control? I'm like filming, long reins, chilling out, laughing. Mm, lovely collected counter that was. Anyway, let me just wipe the tear from my eye before it freezes on my face. But I wouldn't, that's gonna be so cold. Good choice. <laughs> You're a good boy, cow. Right, come on, let's get away from there. Ooh. Do a little bit of bank work. That obviously was exactly what I planned. That's exactly how I intended to ride that. I think we got back just in the nick of time because now it's starting to rain. So um, I think what I'm going to do, because my dogs are looking very cold and miserable, I think I'm just gonna leave McAllister. I look so terrible, but it's cold. Like my skin just, I don't know what happens to my skin when it gets cold, but it's not good. So, 
what I think we'll do is leave Callie loose in the yard. Bill, I've forgotten everybody's names. Dilly, Billy. Billy can join him if he so wishes. And I think I'm going to take the dogs back in the house, let them thaw out. I definitely need a hot drink, a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, hot chocolate, hot water. I don't care at this point. It just needs to be warm. I might take my tack with me and give it a little clean in the warm. It's only half past three, so it's too early to put the horses to bed for the night. So that's why I'm thinking I'll leave them loose in the yard and then come back out at like six o'clock and put them to bed properly. Because I think that's all I need to do, clean my tack. Hmm. I do need to fill some buckets of water up, which doesn't seem like a big job, but because all my taps are frozen, I've got to go to like my big water storage container because my yard isn't mains water. I've got a big, a massive, I've got a massive butt. I actually do have a massive butt. So I need to go and just put buckets into that. In fact, I'll show you. I'll show you what I have to do because all the taps are frozen. Um, look at my massive butt, everybody. Here it is. I have to tie it on because Billy finds it really entertaining to come round and just pull the lid off and then leave it all open so anything could get in there. But that's all my water. So it normally feeds into all the taps, but because all the pipes are frozen, I have to just stick a bucket in the top. And that's how we cope, that's how we do it. Also, do you think it's going to snow? Like, is that a rainy sky or is that a snowy sky? I think, I have a feeling it might be snow, but I am notoriously bad with the weather, so. If I'm right, I'll be very, very happy. Bless my heart. Bless my heart. I think it was about an hour ago I said to you, oh, I'm just gonna go in the house and have a cup of tea and clean my tack in the warm and then put the ponies to bed. No, everything has just gone wrong. Baby Dill is still carrying on the drama. Dill, please, I give up. Um, so what's gone wrong? There's just been so many things. Um, Here's where it all started. So when I was showing you my big water butt and I thought that was a really funny joke, I forgot that I'd left the tack room door open and I had a big thing of sugar beet there and um, McAllister was sticking his head through the door, grabbed hold of the bucket and emptied it. Sugar beet that I'd only put to soak this morning and it was a full, full bucket. It's gone all over the side. I had to pull all the bins out and sweep behind the bins and like sweep it out the door. So that's why there's such a mess there because I was just so annoyed. Um, so that was like issue number one. And then after I'd kind of cleaned all that up, I thought, do you know what? I'm getting fed up of this. I might as well put the ponies to bed now. So once I put the horses to bed, um, and I'm pretty sure this is because the pipes have been frozen all day. Billy's, um, what even is the word? Billy's um, water bowl, like automatic water drinker. It was just pouring out water all over his nice clean dry bed. Um, so I had to turn that off and just get him then a bucket of water to have in his stable rather than using the drinker because that's now out of action. So that was like drama number two. And then I think I decided just to, Billy had done a single poo and I thought, you know, I will just skip that out now. And I left the door open a smidgen and I saw Billy's eye, I saw it in his eyes. I knew it was coming. He just bolted out the door. I'd also left the gate to the paddock open about two foot. He squeezed through it. He squoozed, he squeezed, he squidged through it and ran out into the paddock. And I thought, you know what? I give up. Today's not the day, so I've left him out there. I'm, I'm not responding to him because he's a drama queen. He loves attention. I'm just not playing that game. So I just thought, don't react, do not respond. Because sometimes a non-reaction is the hardest but most beneficial thing to do. So we went for the non-reaction method and he has been like pootling into the yard whilst I've been boiling the kettle and stuff because I thought, you know what? I give up, I'm going to have a cup of coffee in here. Also, the water that was already in my kettle was frozen, so I've had to empty all the ice out of the kettle. Boiled the kettle, made myself a coffee, and I'm going to now clean my tack. Up here, you know, 
So um, that's my day. My hat is itching now. <sighs> Anything else? Anything else? So my day when I was like, oh, I'm just gonna stop working for a couple of hours and go and ride my horse really quickly. No. I'm gonna be working all night, I think, so. Pros and cons of working from home is sometimes the horses do get a little bit in the way, but that's fine. It's fine. I've got my grubby little tack room mug boiled from my grubby little tack room kettle. This is not the luxury. This is not the life that I was supposed to have. When did it go so wrong for me? I don't know. I just don't know. Anyway. I'm not even sure that milk's in date, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yay! Have you had enough, baby? This lighting is so bad. Mmm, aesthetic. It is, that's not helpful. No one wants your nose up the camera. Poor Dilly. Right. Okay. So, over to his. So, the tack is clean. It's absolutely pouring down with rain. All I need to do is go and get Biddy and put him to bed. But I just know that as soon as he sees me coming, he's going to get all frisky and start bolting in the other direction. And I just, I just don't need the hassle. I don't want to be bothered with it. I don't know what I was just saying to you because the camera died when I was mid-sentence and it just came up. I didn't really see that it was flashing saying the battery was low. So I'm not sure that it did. Anyway, I just got a message on the screen saying battery exhausted. Do you know what? I'm exhausted. I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood at all. Although it does mean one thing if it's raining. Hang on. I think it's snowing. Is it? exciting I did say it was going to snow it is it's not gonna stick though it's like sloppy slow sloppy slow sloppy snow I got it right Otis mummy guessed the weather right for the first time possibly ever oh, hello Paddy you're oh, a good boy apart from the sugar beet incident I was so oh. cross with you Take your bowl out, ready for your breakfast. We'll skip that poo out. And then we'll go and get Billy. Okay, everybody. But it really is snowing. Christmas miracle. You know when things start to go wrong and then everything goes wrong and you know how I was just telling you that I was going to skip out Callie's stable and then go and get Billy in, wow. As I was talking to you, telling you that I was going to do that, I left McAllister's stable door open just a touch. And normally, 99% of the time, he wouldn't even dare go near the door. He'd just stay in his stable quite happily, munching on his hay. And I came back to skip his stable out. He's not in here. He's gone also, so now it's pitch black. Both of the horses are out in the paddock and it's snowing and I haven't got a hood. I'm freezing cold. Right. Boys. Come on. I can see like shadow. You can't see a thing and I can't see much more than you. I can see a white blaze. Callie. Don't you walk away from me. Don't make me go and get a head collar either. Cal Great. Come on, naughty boys. Hello, Billy. What a good boy. Come on. You just can't make it up sometimes. And I've got to pick your feet out as well. After that little... Exertion. Right. Thank you, Billy. That's one. I'll try and go and get 
I might as well just go to bed. In fact, I will soon because it is nearly bedtime. Callie, you just started to walk in and now you've seen me coming for you and you're being awkward. Don't be naughty. Good boy. No. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, so yes, there's no point me trying to do anything today. It's just one of those where everything's determined to go wrong. And that's okay. You need days like that because you also have days where everything's really good. Job done. There's one. There's two. Ignore the mess. We don't speak of it. Come on, Dilly. You look like a devil with the flash in your eyes. Come on, baby, let's go in the house. Let's go in the house, come on. I might be nice and carry you down, actually. He's a delicate little flower, aren't you? He hates the winter. He's shaking already. We're not even outside yet. Good night, everybody. That's what am I doing? How do I turn? Why aren't my lights turning off now? Honestly. You're not happy with me, are you? I didn't mean to keep you out there for so long, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs>